A lot of people now are putting these in their houses as a wonderful towel holder that's kind of an antique kind of a farmhouse style that they're calling it, type of a towel holder. This works great in bathrooms, or it can also work great in a garage or out by a pool if you're wanting to hold towels in it. It's very simple, very easy to make, and out of just one two by four, I'm going to show you how to do it quickly and easily. Stick with us. It's very simple to turn a standard eight foot two by four, this is a pine board that we got from Lowe's, into a farmhouse rustic towel holder. Now for those of you who aren't exactly sure what that is, this is something that's been trending a lot lately as something that new homeowners and homeowners that are doing renovations like for the fact that it can store your towels in an upright position in a visible display without taking up shelf space. You simply roll your towels, tuck them into the wall, and it adds a nice visual rustic farmhouse look. It keeps your towels organized, neat, and it's a nice little trendy thing that if you're wanting to uh, get ready to sell your house or you just like that farmhouse look, this is a simple way to turn a standard 2x4, it's an 8 foot long 2x4 into one of those, and I'm going to show you how. Let's get started. The first step I'm going to do is measure this 2x4 to get the appropriate length of each individual piece. Now for simplicity purposes, I'm going to be making several 8 inch pieces. Now that board can be cut to any particular size and any of these other pieces can be cut to any particular size to match your specific style or your specific towel. So if you have really thick fluffy towels and you're needing a little bit longer depth, you just make these cuts a little bit longer. You're going to need several different tools, but they're fairly common tools that most people that are into any kind of woodworking would typically have. One is a chop type saw. You're also going to need to have a table saw and you'll need to have a drill or drill driver. It's also going to be pretty imperative that you have tape measure if you don't already have one and also a pen or a marker or something to mark your uh, lengths with. I'm going to go ahead and mark uh, several 8 inch pieces. So I'm going to lay that down here. And I'm going to go ahead and mark an 8 inch piece. Now again, I'm using a permanent marker here just so that you can kind of see this on the video. Yeah, if you're doing this at home, probably a pencil would be just fine. And then I'm going to make my first cut. Now I've got an 8 inch piece. Now this is actually going to be ripped in half and used as two separate 8 inch pieces but I'm going to need actually six 8 inch pieces to form the outside legs and the back piece for this. So I'm going to need to cut two more just like this. Using the existing one that I've already cut, I can get out my marker and go ahead and mark that and go ahead and make the rest of my cuts. Now I've got my three 8 inch blocks and I have my remaining piece of my 2x4. Now it's time to go ahead and rip those on the table saw and get them down to size. Now with each one of these 8 inch pieces we need to rip it in half to give us two pieces. In order to do that we've got our table saw and I'm going to go ahead and measure and show you as you're not a, probably already aware that these are not 4 inches even though they're 2x4s they're only 3.5 inches. So to do that what I've done is set my table saw up to about 1 and 3 quarters inches to allow me to cut this 3.5 inch piece directly in half. Now I'm going to wear my safety glasses and be extra careful I have removed the guard that's over the top of this just so that you can see how this is going to work and cut this in half. But again you want to keep your guard on there to keep the wood from kicking back. You also want to make sure you keep your hands away from there. You don't want to get any cut fingers. You get your push block going here uh, so that you can push it through there and we'll turn it on. I've noticed that my push block, guys, isn't quite long enough. So what I can do is get a spare piece of wood and apply that in between just so that you can keep your hands away from that. Let's go ahead and cut it and see what happens.
After looking at how long this remaining 2x4 is, that would be a monster towel rack. I'm going to go ahead and cut it down to three feet. It's probably still going to be a little bit big, but I'm going to go ahead and put it down to three feet and go ahead and make one out so we can see a finished product. Again, this is completely adjustable. You can cut it down to whatever size that you need, depending on how big your towels are, how many towels you're going to be using, or if you're wanting to go ahead and use one or two of them in a given room, you may want them a lot smaller. Now that we have all of our pieces cut to the 1.75 inches, it's a little more like a rectangle. So all 2x4s come with a little bit of a rounded edge on it. So to take that rounded edge off, what I've done now is set this down to an inch and a half, which should be enough to cut off that rounded edge and leave us with a perfectly square one and a half inch by one and a half inch piece of wood. So we're gonna put it in here. I'm going to use my little push stick to guide it through cut them all off. Now that all our pieces are cut and squared off, I've gone ahead and laid it out in a dry fit just to make sure that it would work well. This appears to be a pretty good size, although I will say that our towels are a little thinner than most, and it would appear that they will stagger when they're leaned up against the wall. This is going to be okay in our given scenario. However, if you have a specific set of towels and you know that you're wanting it a little bit tighter fit to have them stack directly on top of one another, the simple solution would just be to cut an inch or two off of each one of these four legs, allowing the front to then sit back a little closer to your wall. We have plenty of room in the bathroom and we've got a family of five with a bunch of towels. so. This is gonna be a great way for us to stack those up by a bathtub to allow the kids to be able to grab them out of there as they need to. Now that we've got this thing dry fit and set up where we want it, we're going to go ahead and mark where we're going to want to put our pilot holes for our screws. You can do this a number of different ways. Personally, once I've got it lined up where I think I want it, it's usually easiest just to go along and mark with a pencil where you're gonna want your holes before you attach this thing. We know that we have to have one at the bottom and top of each of these to be able to secure those two pieces together. You're also going to have to have four more, one in each side, to hold these pieces to the sides down here. And then you're going to have to have something to attach it to the wall. So typically you'll just put a couple of them directly in this back piece right here. And that's it. 12 screws, 12 holes. You can glue it if you'd like. We'll probably put a dab of glue on there when we screw them in. Once you've got it marked, you can then go ahead and take it apart because you now know where all of your spots are going to be. You've got one there, one there, one there, a couple up there. So we know where all 12 of our drill holes have to be. Now that we've got all of our pieces marked, it's time to go ahead and drill our holes. For me, you can do this again a variety of different ways, as I'm sure you'll all comment. But for me, simplicity is usually the, the easiest way to go about doing this. Uh, I have with me a, I believe it's called an Incy bit or a Teensy bit. I will put a link to it in Amazon so that you can see it. But it's a, essentially what it is, is it's a drill bit that has a countersink bit built into it. So it's an all-in-one. That way, as you drill your pilot holes down through these uh, to connect them, you can also put a little bit of a countersink. That way, whenever you put your actual screws in, it will set it back nice and flush or, or inset it into your piece. That way you don't have to end up driving it in too far, splitting the wood, or having it exposed. Uh, it just kind of makes it a little cleaner, more finished look. So I'm going to go ahead and drill these 12 different holes, and then we'll go ahead and put it together.
Now that we've gone ahead and got all these countersunk, we can now go ahead and line them up to get them put together. I'm going to be using some two and a half inch screws, just construction grade, two and a half inch screws, and using some of this Tight Bond 2 premium wood glue to put a drop or two in between just to give it some extra stability and then driving these screws in. Now that we've got our piece put together and we've given our glue a chance to set up, I'm now gonna go over everything lightly with a little bit of sandpaper. I've got a random orbital sander here that we're gonna just, just hit everything real lightly with just to take off any little imperfections that I deem that I don't care for. And then I'm gonna show you the finish we're gonna put on this and it's gonna be a nice little touch to this rustic antique uh, towel holder. <laughs> Now that I've given this a quick sand and made sure that there's no real sharp edges or anything that's gonna catch on the towel, and I've also made sure to remove any of the little marks that we've left, uh, it's now time for me to go ahead and put a finish on this. Uh, a nice finish that I've liked to use in the past, uh, which is my personal favorite, is this antique oil Minwax finish. If I'm doing a lot of work, I, I will typically use this, but I'll put a link up uh, up above so that you can have a look at this. This is some really great stuff and I highly recommend it. Would use this on a lot of projects, but in this particular application, because I'm going for that rustic uh, antique farmhouse style look, I figured we'd go ahead and bring back an old custom here. Uh, back in the day to create some of their old finishes, farmhouses and such, they would take some old used vinegar and keep it in a jar. and add bolts and various other scrap metal from around their farm uh, into this vinegar to create their own stain. Uh, that's what I've done with this. This has actually used some steel wool that I just put into this vinegar. It's been in there probably close to a year. Uh, it doesn't take that long for it to degrade, but anyway, and then uh, what that does is it uh, breaks it down and gives it the rust colored look. In this particular mixture, I've also added some old coffee grounds as well, just due to a recipe that I found online. So this has some coffee grounds and some steel wool that we'll be applying onto this. And after it gets done and sits for a little while, it will kind of have this patinaed look. Uh, it makes it a little bit darker look to it. Again, this is on pine wood. Now this, this finish will work different on different types of wood. If I use this on cherry, it almost turns it a real dark gray or a black color. Uh, using it on this pine, it doesn't appear to change it that much, but it does give it a little bit of a darker uh, color, a little more antique -y kind of color to it. And again, it does change a little over time. So when you first put it on there, keep in mind that it may take a little while for it to, to reach its full potential. But again, it just adds a little darker look. To it and i'm going to go ahead and put that on this one uh, just because i don't know i think it might look kind of cool if it's a little more antique and a little more original that way uh, for our farmhouse style wood i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial in a way to make our rustic antique farmhouse style towel rack if you do like the video that you've seen and wish to see more please feel free to like and subscribe we'd love to hear from you in the comment section below until then be safe.